Arnold, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic to see you, but if a few weeks ago someone told me, end of Jan, you can get a sit down with Arnold Allen, yeah. I would be so excited because I think we'll be sitting here looking ahead to a massive fight in just a few weeks' time. Not meant to be this time. No. So what happened? Uh, just doing my old uh, training over Christmas and uh, into the new year, and uh, I got thrown and my, <laughs> my rib popped out. So, yeah, so not meant to be. Six weeks out and a few more weeks recovery. Should be okay to start sort of picking up and getting back into it. So, yeah. So I've heard the phrase a rib pop before. Mm. I don't actually know what that means. So what's happened? Uh, according to the doctor, I see I tore a muscle off a bone there somewhere. And, yeah, and then and some rib popped out of place. And yeah, yeah. Uh, wish I hadn't asked. Yeah, it's, not <laughs> but it's uh, you know, part of the job, I guess. It happens. And have you had it before? I have, but not this bad. I had a little bit. One slipped out before, and it was. It was all right, a couple of weeks, and it was okay. But this is—I uh, was on the sofa for a couple of weeks. I had a cold for a couple of weeks as well, coughing and sneezing with uh, oh, a dodgy rib. You've oh, been man. through it. Yeah, that was that was horrible. <laughs> so, how close were you to to sign in to fight in London? Did it, as far as you were concerned, was it all kind of confirmed? Or no, nothing was confirmed. So, a week. I, so I did this, and then uh, I hadn't been offered anything for London yet, and I was sitting at home thinking. Please don't offer for me in London. Please don't offer for me for London because I was thinking that it's not going to work. Not going to work. And then uh, yeah, I got offered uh, for London and I had to turn it down. So yeah. who was it? Who were you supposed to be fighting? Uh, Max. I think the fight. Everyone, everyone was predicting that. Like ninety nine point nine percent of people were saying, "Please can we get this fight? Please can we get this fight?" But uh, and he was in for it. And I assume so. Yeah. But I had to. Um, yeah. I mean, I had to let all the fans down, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> maybe in a later date or something like that. So. Have you been getting, given any assurances about is Max going to wait around for, for you to get back in the mix here? Or? Uh, no, not yet. So just seeing how long this takes. Doctors give me a six week sort of thing, so a few more weeks, and if they're right and I can start picking up training, then sooner the better, you know, get back to it. But how much of a matchup were you, how much were you looking forward to that matchup? Yeah, like that. In my position, you know, that that is the dream matchup. You yeah. know, the interim title got passed up, whatever, I didn't get it. For me, this was the silver lining. That would have been bigger. Like, getting a win over someone like Max, you know, one of the best featherweights of all time. If you can get a win there, you can stick your interim in the bin. But uh, yeah. it's, yeah, not meant to be. So yeah. It is what it is. What do you think you can do to, to, to make sure that this opportunity doesn't completely go away? Don't get me wrong, fighting in London against Max is, is like perfect, isn't it? I mean, yeah. When can you get a, an all-time great on home turf? But yeah. what can you do in the meantime to make sure you can keep that one alive? Because that is a fight we would love to see. Yeah. And for your career, it would be, it'd be uh, huge, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I, I don't see why it goes anywhere. And, you know, I don't think, in, in his position, I don't think he's in a massive rush to, mm. to do anything. There's not really, I'm the only guy on a 10-fight win streak. And if I don't get the interim title shot then surely that there's something above me or you know something in those realms yeah and there's not a lot of things above you right no exactly yeah exactly so with the interim and then Volkanovski going up a couple of guys injured uh i think maybe worse than me i don't know but uh yeah so we'll see so you'll be in london i suppose watching along yeah hopefully be there as a guest i don't know like last you were last time yeah you were sat of, well you <laughs> began the night sat a, f a few rows back from me <laughs> just over here yeah i remember looking over i was like that yeah, oh, I don't know if I could do that anymore. To be honest, after the last couple, I don't think you could do that last time. Mate. <laughs> no, you still gave it a go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. So yeah, mate, if I'm there as a guest, I'll be there. So. Yeah, I mean, looking forward to it. The, the cards shaping up yeah. nicely. I mean, Leon, Leon fighting, defending his title on the home turf is like, I don't want to miss that. So yeah. I want to be there live to see that, and I've got full faith in him to get the business done again, and uh, you know, keep that belt. There's so many good fights as well. British guys. I was just talking to Nathaniel. Uh, Nathaniel and um, Leroy Murphy. That's yeah. a great fight. I was a bit surprised when they did the all-British thing on a home tail, but I know a lot of people don't like that. I like the fight. It's a great fight. I, I think that li just one, mm. I think, gives a nice edge to the night. Yeah. yeah. I think it could be really special. Could yeah. kind of give it a different look. Definitely. No, it's, it's, it's a fan favourite fight. Then the yeah. co-main event, obviously, Fazeev and uh, Gaethje. 
That's yeah. That's uh, two yeah. great strikers. Obviously, is he very technical and Gates is a bit of a mad dog. You know? Yeah, so it's yeah, going to yeah. be fun. Whatever happens. You usually feel bad about talking to fighters about other people's fights, but you're you're basically a pundit now, aren't you? You got your own <laughs> yeah. thing going on. I'm gonna have my own channel going. Soon. <laughs> 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 How are you making sense of the, the featherweight division at the moment? I suppose the, the pinnacle of it is a bit on hold yeah. while Volkanovski jumps up. Um, then you've got Emmett Yair underneath. That, that should be a fun fight. But um, the, the, there's a gap there, isn't there, for you once you get back to really Yeah, it's, it's into... uh, interesting because I think Volkanovski wins. He probably stays at lightweight. Was that a prediction or was that saying if he wins? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, if, if he wins. If he wins, okay, if, sorry, I thought you just came out with him. <laughs> if, if he wins, I don't <laughs> see him wanting to come back to lightweight. I know everyone says, oh, I'll defend that title, I'll come back. And it's £10 weight class. It's not boxing. The weight classes are, are big. £10 yeah. pounds is a lot. And you change your body, you get used to that whole new sort of weight class. You don't want to, you can't consistently go up and down. I, I don't know, I don't think so. And, uh, yeah, and also... It probably feels a lot nicer to not cut that ten pounds, yeah. and then if you beat, you know, is he pound for pound number two, uh, Islam? I think he is. If you if you one solid- two, I think yeah. Leon's number three. Right, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you solidify, solidify yourself as the number number one pound for pound yeah. at lightweight. Why would you go back? How, how big is that ten pounds between featherweight and lightweight? I mean, what, what's the difference there? Uh, wow, ten, yeah, ten pounds is huge for me. Like. When I'm cutting weight, the, the last ten pounds is where it's the sticking point, you know. Like if it was the lightweight to one fifty five, would be sweet. But the light, well, I mean, it's still fine. But the last ten is that's where it's like, oh, it's our work. Yeah. So, and and also you you probably fuel yourself different through the camp. You eat a bit more, you know. You put on a bit more muscle, a bit more strength. So then you probably get heavier naturally. So then you probably cut the same amount of weight you did to cut away <laughs> at fed weight. So yeah, you change your whole body, you change everything. While we're talking about weight jumps, the weight that John Jones is going to be <laughs> put it on to move the heavyweight, yeah. the opposition he's going to face, which is going to be you know, 50, 60, whatever pounds yeah, heavier than yeah. what he's used to. I mean, how big a jump do you think that is? How manageable do you think it is what he's trying to achieve here? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's very manageable uh, for him. The heavyweight division is not like... It's changing in like recent years. Like mm. it's, you know, with guys like uh, obviously Aspinall, he's a great technician. Uh, Pavlovich recently looks great. John Jones is, is, is El Sirogan as well. He moves fantastic, mm. like really well. The heavyweight division in past it was like just big guys, you know, whatever shape or size. They were just big guys that weren't highly skilled, big, powerful, big punches. Yeah, I thought like John Jones probably a great technician, one of the best strategists. He's not got knockout power. I'm sure he has. But, I mean, he hasn't got like that one punch thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's more of an outclass, outskill, out strategy. And I don't think there's anyone else in that heavyweight division that can make a game plan, stick to a plan, have a strategy like, like John Jones. So, uh, you know, I think it's a good option for him. And there might be better fights there for him than there is at light heavyweight. But saying that, I did always think the one way John Jones loses was getting knocked out like a one punch knockout yeah and i'm sure that the heavyweights there's there's plenty of those guys there that have the ability and the capability to do that so do you think he would have had more chance of of pulling off what he's trying to pull off if he'd made this jump a few years back from what you were saying in terms mm. of the the technique and the skill levels of, of the heavyweights yeah yeah i think so I, I think even in the last like last three four five years like in that time the heavyweight division is like just gone through the roof, like with the with the skill level, the way guys are fighting now is, you know, some of these heavyweights move like the lightweight guys. Yeah. They're great movement, great skills all round, and they're not just big lumps. They're like big athletic guys, you know. They're not, you know, before I guess they were going to other sports like like rugby or boxing or you know, American football or something mm-hmm. like that. Now it's like they're in the UFC, so yeah, it's a there's a shift with the athletes at heavyweight. Speaking of a shift, I wonder what you make of this with Francis leaving the UFC mm. to, to explore other options. As a fighter, I suppose all through your career, UFC championship has been the pinnacle. It's yeah. the thing everyone's working towards. Has that changed now slightly in that what you can achieve and what you might go on to do isn't just restricted to the UFC? Um, for me, no. Like no. The, the whole goal is that one thing. You yeah. know? But, you know, I see, frankly, like, Francis achieved that one thing 
maybe that was his goal and and then there's other options other doors i'm sure for him like being heavyweight champion of the world and and leaving i guess on your terms i'm sure there's a lot of doors open to you so uh, i reckon the world's his oyster isn't it do, do you think other fighters will be speaking to their management and saying i'm focused on the ufc but can you just see what else is going out? Yeah. Can we do a crossover fight? Can we do this? Yeah. Can we do that? I, I think after McGregor boxed Mayweather, there was a lot of interest in that, was there? All the, you know, all the UFC fighters were sort of, oh, I box this guy, I box that guy. I, you know, one of my goals when I was a kid was to box. I always wanted to box. So I boxed as an amateur, but never professionally. So I'd be open to that one day. Like if there was a, one of those sort of crossover matchups they wanted to do, I'd, I'd be keen for that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not chasing it at the minute, but yeah. Well, you need to get that rib sore first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, if I was boxing, I wouldn't have got hip tossed and popped my ribs off. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so look, let's, let's, let's finish it up with this. Um, disappointed that you're injured, yeah. clearly. Um, hopefully, you'll be back training soon. What are you eyeing up in terms of a realistic time you can be returning and hopefully, again, it's this uh, big fight against Max? Uh, April-ish, hopefully. I mean... They said six weeks, so about three more weeks. So if they're right, hopefully I can pick up training. I mean, hopefully I'm ahead of schedule and I can do it too, but it still hurts, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But at the same time, uh, you got to be, if you want to be great, you've got to be patient, right? So I can't rush that. I don't think that's a saying, but... I just made it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. Thank you. Mate. Cheers, Arnold. Good man.